and welcome, friends. Uh, welcome back to another episode uh, session of <laughs> Level 1 Adventuring. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Wolf Scott. Um, thank you for joining us tonight, if you're here. I, as always, I appreciate your time and energy. The entire cast and crew of uh, Level 1 Adventuring appreciates your time and energy, even if it is only I here for now. Uh, but you'll be seeing more of us later on in the week. Uh, who are we? Who am I? If you've never been to Level 1 Adventuring before, what the stream is, is we are dedicated to role-playing games uh, in all their varieties and forms. Tabletop role-playing games, digital role-playing games, storytelling games of all kinds, uh, group and solo. And depending on the night that you join us, you might be seeing a solo night or a group night. Tonight just happens to be a solo. Um... Other things I should shout out. Oh, uh, please, uh, thank you, Tabletop Audio, for the ambient sounds and other music you'll be hearing uh, during the stream today. Thank you for providing music uh, for all kinds of creators. Uh, also, thank you to Streamlabs and Stream Spell down below for all of the visual effects and fanciness that you've seen on the stream today. Uh, you can also use our affiliate link to upgrade your own streams in a similar way, which is pretty sweet. And uh, please check us out on all platforms, all socials. Uh, Please follow us on YouTube. We upload all of our live streams there in case you miss an episode, so you won't miss an episode. Um, and the Discord, where we talk about all the new games that we're going to play. We we trade memes, we vibe, it's a fun time. Uh, but what are we doing today, you may ask? Well, uh, today is a pretty cool and fun episode because this is going to be the second run of a solo RPG that uh, I am streaming uh, called, sorry, I'm going to just turn on performance mode so I don't look at myself anymore. <laughs> uh, and I will also throw our, so now you should be able to get a, get a look at what we're looking at here for terms of the game. Uh, this is a game called Firelights, uh, written by Rene Pierre. Uh, oh, I should actually... I have the link. I'll post it in our chat in case you are interested. Uh, should have done that ahead of time, but I wasn't thinking. It's okay. Bear with me. Level 1 adventuring. Uh, Firelights. Here we go. This is the link for you to buy. It's six bucks. Pretty crazy uh, how cheap that is. And I will also link you to the writer... And creator at Twitter. There we go. Should be able to add that to chat now. Perfect. And we'll pin that to end of stream. So if you want to pick up a copy of this for yourself, that is totally doable and I highly recommend it. Uh, what is... What is Firelights, you may ask? Uh, well, as the creator uh, describes it, it is sort of a Metroidvania uh, in, uh, inspired by Hollow Knight or in the Blind Forest solo or cooperative role-playing game. We'll be playing it solo today. Uh, and you play the role of a being known as a firelight. And what is a firelight? The game describes them as a sort of insect-like being uh, whose sole purpose, and I say soul with, a, with, with somewhat of a, with a pun, uh, intended there, whose sole purpose is to ferry um, the spirits of the deceased to the, the the other side, right? To to their next type of existence. Uh, however, unfortunately, the beacons, the flames that have led the souls to the other side in ages past have died out mysteriously. And these darker spirits, known as curses, have sort of taken over the veil, which is the, I guess, the realm between realms, right? So you are a firelight. You are the last firelight who is awakened, uh, and it is now your duty to relight the, the beacons, to reconnect all of those flames, and help the souls get to the other side. So very evocative, a very cool kind of setting information. Uh, what's great about this game so far, uh, if, you've, if you've missed the first episode, it is still live on Twitch, and it will also be on YouTube in case uh, you happen to wait until that disappears. Um, what's great about this game is, aside from the very interesting setting and the very sort of uh, wonderful language that's used to sort of uh, prime those images in your mind, is that as you can see from our... Um, 
from our page here. It is uh, it is two pages long. It is a trifold pamphlet, so essentially six six pages of rules. Um, one of which is just art, actually. So five pages of rules, uh, and it gives you so much content, so much uh, ability to generate narratives and stories, sort of for yourself. Um, we, I had a wonderful time, sort of developing all of the all of the story points we did last game. So, uh, hopefully, you know, my imagination is firing at all cylinders once again to have that happen. Uh, I can run us through... Okay, uh, other thing that's cool about this game. Uh, only requires two things to play. Dice, which are D6s, by the way. The easiest the easiest dice to find. And a deck of cards. Uh, I do not have a physical set of cards. <laughs> so I'll be using the, this digital deck. Which is honestly hilarious because I'm realizing now every time I play I'm going to have to rebuild the stack of cards. I don't think I have to rebuild it exactly. I just need to worry about which are the face cards and which are the um, the standard cards. But I've kind of I've kind of written myself into a task there every time I want to play, which is going to be hilarious. Um, but yeah, all you need is a, a deck of standard cards and D6 dice. We're using digital equivalents, but obviously most people will have those at home. So you don't need anything special to play. Just the rules which you can download for six bucks, which is wild. Also, thank you for the writer. Uh, our playthrough is actually linked on their on their homepage for the uh, at itch.io. Um, so I'm very honored. Thank you very much um, for debuting us for broadcasting us uh hopefully we do your game more uh more justice as we continue the journey of our firelight so who is our firelight you may be asking i hear i hear the the, the question rattling inside of your brains well i'll tell you this is our firelight our firelight is a being known as last wish um last wish sort of has this praying mantis-like humanoid, bipedal humanoid, praying mantis kind of body, covered in a crimson red shawl etched in runes, carries a walking stick, which has a lantern light that carries the, the flame of the beacons for the lost souls at its head. And although this art, which is wonderfully rendered, uh, you know, AI style, doesn't do this element of the character quite just this as I was hoping, um, has these big sort of moth-like antennae that like, you know, like sort of float outward. Uh, and the carapace and especially the, the antenna are covered in a sort of bioluminescence that kind of burns like low ember light and, you know, especially glows when they're using some of their firelight powers, like communing with um, the beacons themselves or the protectors, which are sort of like the spiritual force um, that gives the firelights their purpose. Um, Ooh, hey Loki, what's up? Good to, good to see you in chat. With Metroid Mini, it makes me wonder if their music is involved in this creation, like how music plays a role in... Oh, that would be interesting. I mean, obviously all the music that I'm providing is from just a just a free provider from Tabletop Audio, but that would be that would be cool if there was like a, a music element involved. I wonder if you if you were if you were really going for it, I bet you could probably like how I have in my session notes like music that is queued up to the to the certain parts of the map i bet you could do something similar you know um kind of make notes about musical cues um that'd be fun um but what happened in our last uh story before we get into the current story um so uh our firelight uh last wish oh i should probably talk a little bit about last wish what else so we have the praying mantis the red robe oh last wish um uh you, they have three stats in firelights patience quick and forceful they aren't so much stats so much as they are methods by which you approach situations and you can assign certain numbers to them i decided to make last wish very patient and very quick but not very forceful uh i this is this is gonna be really hard for me to remember because last wish kind of speaks and thinks about themselves very differently than most characters i've played because last wish isn't so much a singular being as last wish is I imagine the firelights are sort of like a spiritual collective consciousness in which they are just one emanation of. So the way they speak of themselves uh, and the firelights is is sort of uh, in in collective broad terms. Um, so they use they them pronouns. 
Um, and so I'm going to try to keep that. I, I kept tripping up last stream because it's hard to like train your brain to say uh, that this one or this is, this one is instead of like I am because they don't see themselves as an I. Um, so it is interesting, but it's a fun thing to play with. So I'm going to try and like be really good about it. Um, there's also a stat called Fatigue, which represents their sort of wear and tear in their journey. Um, unfortunately, we have suffered a bit of fatigue in a fight, but we're, we're still holding firm. And we have two treasures. Now, it's actually funny. I talked to Renee um, on Twitter uh, earlier today because we were trading thoughts on the game. Um, and if you look in the rules, the uses of treasures are still pretty vague. Um... So we had a little discussion about, you know, what treasures are supposed to be. Obviously, a lot of it is up to interpretation for the player themselves. Um, but we did find two treasures last game, so that is our, our current sheet. So what happened with us last time? Uh, so Last Wish awoke for the first time, sort of broke out of their, their cosmic stasis, if you will, and was born as much as a... As a ferryman of uh, lost souls can be, uh, found themselves in this strange temple that was filled with these stone cocoons, which we presume were filled with other firelights um, before they were mysteriously vanished or destroyed or, you know, the, the, the curses came to the Vale and Penumbra. Um, but woke up, uh, was sort of psychically communed with uh, by the protectors, which is, in my interpretation of them as written, are sort of like the, you know, the divine progenitors of the spirit world that give give the firelights their tasks, uh, and was sort of told that, you know, last wish is the very last of the fire firelights. Uh, they are the last wish of the protectors to to hopefully save this this cursed world. And fire uh, and um, last wish. Uh, crawled out of their cocoon, found their walking staff, grabbed it, um, was sort of treated to a vision of previous lives and incarnations as, as firelights, and sort of finally understood their, their meaning and their reason for being, and threw on their shawl and decided to, uh, to set foot out into the world and see, see what they could do. Uh, very quickly did they discover some issue, uh, because Last Wish... Um, was beset upon by a calamity. Now, a calamity is one of the type of curses that hunt and stalk the world that are like tearing apart the, the veil. And uh, the calamities is written sort of take on the forms of giant spiders that are made of like mist and smoke and they're made of poison. Um, so very spooky. <laughs> uh, ambushed us. I guess they were lying in wait for new firelights who were uh, waking up. Ambushed us right outside the temple, which was built upon... Uh, this this series of rivers that were dotted with statues of like people uh, in various states of emotional st uh, states some some in duress some in euphoria uh, the thing about the world of penumbra and the veil vale is that it's not the real world right it's a spirit realm and so the world is abstract and it is expressed through feelings and ideas more than it is in physical um, manifestations. And so, you know, you have these tables that help you try to define um, what the world looks like or feels like, um, but they are sort of all written like emotionally charged or, or almost mentally charged. So we got the estuary of love. So it, to my mind, that was a bunch of rivers that were crisscrossing um, these statues of these people who were experiencing different forms of love or loss of love and their tears of joy or sadness were sort of cycling into these rivers that were pouring out across the landscape. Uh, and unfortunately, there was a calamity waiting for us uh, outside. So we uh, sort of deftly maneuvered and, <laughs> and muscled for rank, as Cake would say. Uh, we definitely maneuvered and avoided the calamity. We sort of tricked them into dipping themselves into the waters. And in my mind, you know, sort of like the the great power of, of like the memories of the the undying souls here are like antithetical to the being of the calamities which want to destroy them so dipping itself into the water sort of hurt it uh, and we sort of allowed ourselves to dodge and dip around until uh, the calamity sort of forced itself into the water and was dissipated uh, but not before we heard sort of another otherworldly force 
uh, speak through the calamity, sort of the darker, um, the 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 opposite of the protectors, whatever is creating these calamities to try and devour the spirit world and sort of, you know, swore vengeance against us, uh, but was destroyed. Uh, and then with that, we found two treasures, uh, which in my mind are sort of these crystallized tears of the, of the weeping statues, uh, which sort of hold memories inside um, of love from, from, from all the souls that have passed through here. And we found those, we kept moving. Uh, then we found ourselves into the Wasteland of Redemption. So one thing you should note about traveling in this game is that it is done through these cards, right? The cards represent your map. So every time you have a face card, it is sort of like a regular zone, if you will. Uh, when you find a face card, oh, I've cracked my neck. Oof, yikes, if you heard that, sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you find a face card, that is a land where a beacon is supposed to be, and the beacons are the unlit fires which guide the souls to their next lives. Uh, so we uh, found one very early on, which was very fortuitous, uh, but it was unlit. We had to figure out how to light it. It turns out uh, we needed to kind of fuel it with a first soul, but we had to lead a soul there. And luckily we did find a soul who was already in the Wasteland of Redemption. The Wasteland of Redemption to me was this barren field of stone obelisks that were covered in symbols and writing, which when viewed would tell the stories of people's lives and how they uh, conquered, you know, the, the shadow aspects of themselves, the, the worst parts of themselves, and sort of redeemed themselves before death. Uh, but we found the spirit of a young thief by the name of Kisara. And uh, Kassara has been in the wasteland trying to find, um, to confirm whether or not they they redeem themselves before their passing, because uh, they had the sort of storyline we came up with where, you know, she did some crimes and some not so, uh, some good things and got into some debt with some loan sharks. And she was trying to pay off her debt because they were, they were gonna press down on her family, but she was actually whacked before she ever learned if the money that she paid um, got to her, her, her debts and like cleaned her family's name. Uh, and so we helped Kasara find her story written in the stones and she got to witness the last few moments of her life and afterlife. And it was confirmed that Kasara's uh, debt was paid and her family's name cleared. So she felt that she was redeemed. Uh, and then that brought her that made her very emotional. Uh, and then uh, Last Wish brought her over to the to the bonfire and sort of spoke with her about her life and rem reminded her of, of things of her past, which sort of helped stoke the fire. We were unsure of how to start the fire, but it seemed that sort of reminding the spirit of, of things about her life that brought her peace or joy helped kindle the flame uh, to the point where it began to roar very strongly. Uh, and then her spirit was absorbed into the fire, which fully lit it and lit the first beacon. Uh, the objective of the game, the storytelling prompts are to light six beacons and that should fulfill the story. So we, we, got, we got one of the beacons lit. Um, so very heartfelt, heartfelt moment with Kisara, um, which means we kind of have to figure out where we're going next because that's where we ended the game. So we only have two zones, one of which is the temple and the estuary. The second is the first, um, my mind, my brain, my, my words, uh, the first beacon. So that's what we go down here. We take a look at all of the different actions we can take and this will help us discover what to do next. Uh, all right, so exploring the world when we start a new game, we've already added the first new region. So I don't think we want to do explore the world. I think what we want to do is discover regions. Well, I guess what we should do before we leave here, we should search for treasures, right? I feel like that's going to be a, a common thing we do is we look for anything of value uh, in the world in one zone before we leave it. Um, so when we search for something that is lost, we take an action plus an approach to see how many treasures we find. Um, so let's open up our cards because the cards and dice mechanic, you'll see how that kind of works. So basically what happens is when you take an action, which is written right down here in the corner, uh, you draw two cards face up from the deck. 
Then we roll and sum our two dice, and we add any modifiers. Now, to my knowledge, the modifiers for discovering regions are our approaches, which is either patient, quick, or forceful, which is written right here. We already talked about how uh, Last Wish is more patient than anything else. That's probably where we'll, what we'll rely on. But first, let's draw our cards. So we got one, and we got two. Ooh, okay. That's bad news for us because jacks are worth a lot. They're very high, I think, in terms of the... Yeah, they're worth 11 plus a 10. So 21. I don't think there's any way we can actually roll that <laughs> um, with our dice, uh, no matter what we do. Uh, but, you know, to, to, to facilitate the game's rules, because this is, once again, a sort of a newly published indie game, so we want to see how it works. Uh, we roll our two dice. We got a four. Uh, then we will add our approach, which for me will be patient. So that's another two, which is six. Um, and then we figure out how it stacks up. So if your score is higher than both cards, there's light. If your score is higher than one card, there's shade. Otherwise, there's darkness. Six is not higher than any of those cards, nor the sum, which means we have ended in uh, darkness. So now we'll go back to search for treasures. Upon darkness, a curse is on to you. Mark one fatigue. Okay, so we might get into a curse fight. Uh, I'm gonna mark my second bit of fatigue. So I'm gonna say that, you know, um, that Last Wish, um, you know, is sort of praying before the flame. They've just watched Kisara's body get absorbed into the beacon. She sort of became embers. It wasn't a painful process. She smiled the whole time. It was it was peaceful. It was warm. It was comforting. But all the same, Kisara has has left uh, has has left them, and Last Wish. It, in a way feels very comforted because they're completing, this is the first example of them completing their sort of purpose. Um, but they've also just sort of lost the first friend that they've made. They've helped this person. They've learned a lot about their life in a very short amount of time. They've got to witness um, their redemption and the last moments of their life and, and play a game with them that was very important to them as a child. Uh, and just as quickly as, as she came, Kassar is now one with the beacon, and so I think there is sort of a heaviness in Last Wish in this moment, and Last Wish is, um, you know, I think it knelt before the beacon, um, staff in hand, there's a flame, um, and I think uh, as, uh, and maybe says a few, in, in that wise and sagacious sort of uh, mystical voice that I'm trying to do for Last Wish, <laughs> um, Kisara, thank you. Light the fire. Help others find their way. We will be right behind you. Um, or this one shall be right behind you. <laughs> um, and I think maybe reaches down to where all the sticks and the stones were that they were playing Five Finger Discount, which was the name that she played with her sister. Uh, and maybe throws them into the fire too, which, you know, spark. And I think as Last Wish turns around to sort of get a, uh, a surveillance of the land, because we kind of described too how once the beacon was relit, uh, some of the, the, the darker aspects of the world around them, which were sort of, uh, you know, sort of mutated by by the curses uh, sort of taking over the land, were being reversed and it was becoming more dreamlike and calm and pleasant. Um, so I think there's a part of Last Wish which is maybe trying to route around through um, the resplendent new greenery which is poking up through the ground, sort of the dreamlike uh, blossoms and the psychedelic like waveforms of energy that are, that are growing around the field, the wastelands of redemption, maybe becoming not so waste-like trying to find anything of value that might help them on their journey forward. Uh, but unfortunately, um, you know, that the gout of flame, which has risen up from the beacon, has attracted the attention of probably 
good and ill forces alike, uh, and I'm sure a curse would be drawn uh, to a beacon being relit. So, um, so we marked a fatigue. A curse is on to us, which means we're not quite in conflict with the curse yet, but we may be. I think the first thing that we should do is roll to see what kind of curse it is. Um, and I'm just going to make it a random roll like I did last time. I'm going to roll a d4. It is a three. One, two, three, which means it is a hollow. Uh, the hollow is a pretty strong, a strong one at eight strength. Uh, okay, so the hollow is described as a worm with eyes that gleam like rubies, attacks from below and consumes all within its grasp. Um, the art that I generated under that description, this is this is our hollow. So if you can imagine sort of a purple worm <laughs> from D and D, an armored, an armored centipede like um, uh, body of 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 scales and and glowing red eyes and these like tearing mandibles right um so what i imagine is you know we throw the sticks into the flame we're communing with the spirits of kasara and the protectors and all around us you know the world begins to rumble and shake and some of the massive obelisks that have the stories of the fallen begin to shift and crumble and i described how some of the stones um sort of levitated on their own accord, you know, in this, like, dream realm. And perhaps, um, perhaps even some have begun to, like, mend themselves back together, uh, given that we were sort of restoring the energy, the peace back to this place. Um, but now they're being violently shaken uh, and stirred by, by movements unbeknownst to us, sort of under the earth. And, um, uh, last wish... Uh, detects this and I think uh, quickly ducks behind uh, and I said quickly so now I'm gonna have to use the quick uh, the quick approach uh, the massive uh, staircase podium that the beacon is lit on as across from the beacon uh, you know maybe a couple yards off there is a, a gigantic plume of earth and and dust that is torn up uh, out from underneath the the ground and it probably cracks and sunders one of a uh, couple of the obelisks like tossing them aside as this massive body sort of rolls and rifts up upward uh, you know and releases a hollow I imagine sort of this empty roar it's almost like the body has nothing within it it's all consuming right like it eats it devours the sort of dream stuff that makes up uh, the realm, but it, it never is satisfied, right? So it just opens up those mandibles and just releases like a hollow, like into the night, uh, the night sky. I imagine that Penumbra in the Veil is like always in a state of twilight, not quite morning, not quite night. You're so, sort of like frozen in half time. Uh, so there's always like that silvery, you know, that transition to like moon to sun kind of kind of light um overcast above us of course uh, uh mingled with the silvery mists and the mystical smoke that the burnt out beacons leave behind uh but yes i think this hollow just rips up from the earth releases that guttural empty like into the twilight and then like sort of narrows its eyes on the beacon because it is detected that the beacon is lit and perhaps it wants to disturb the beacon, but in my mind, I don't think a single, a single, um, a single curse could do it, right? In my mind, I feel like it would take the collective force of multiple curses, or perhaps that, that disembodied, um, um, sinister, power that is empowering the curse it's kind of like how the protectors um speak to us the firelights whatever is speaking and coordinating the curses probably has the power to do that but maybe not one but i think that the curse does know that something or more specifically someone some firelight uh has to be nearby if the beacon is lit so i think like it sort of cranes its head around and its eyes 
you know, are like those crimson, um, crimson headlights, and they actually shine like a cone of red light across the, the, the ground, and it's sort of like moving its head around, and you can see um, the shadows of the obelisks are, you know, sort of being awash with that red light uh, as, um, as Last Wish is sort of like darting in between the spaces of darkness, trying not to be seen. And I think the eyes sort of gl glow with, uh, with, uh, you can almost see, it's almost like, um, you can, you can visibly see that the curse is almost taken over mentally by something else, right? Like there's sort of like a pang in its head and the eyes burn with a newfound light. And suddenly the, um, the bristles on the back of our mantis-like carapace on, on our neck, like stand on edge as we hear that like sinister voice begin to bore in the back of our minds. It has not been so long since we've seen each other, Firelight. I know you're here. Show yourself. Uh, and, you know, of course, <laughs> uh, I, uh, Last Wish is not keen on being seen. So what I think is going to happen is we are going to confront Risk. Confront Risk, I'm pretty sure, is the action we take for the general exploration of the world. And I think we are just going to try and sneak our way out of this place uh, as quickly as we can. Um, yeah, I think that's the one we want. Evade danger, I think, is tied to the fight. Um, yeah, we're going to try and sneak away from the fields without any treasures. Uh, fighting this massive hollow is not worth a treasure. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up our story deck. These are already used. And we will draw two new cards. Bup, bup. Okay, decent. Um, I, once again, uh, said we are going to use... What's the word? <laughs> um, gonna nope on out of here, says Loki. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think that it, as, as, uh, as emboldened as last wish may be from saving that one soul. Uh, I don't think it wants to stand toe to toe with a towering, uh, bottomless, <laughs> gaping worm uh, that has sort of a, a being speaking through it right now. I think I think they're not. I think they're they're okay with evading that. So we're gonna roll two dice, which is a grand total of seven plus one because we're taking the quick approach that's what I said earlier, um, to try and to try and get on out. So that's going to bring us to an eight, which means we beat the seven, but we tie the eight, which if I'm not mistaken, ties don't count in our favor. Um, if your score is higher than both cards, if your score is higher than one card, yeah, so I don't think ties count for us. So if your score is higher than one card, there is shade. So... Upon shade, it's a partial success. <laughs> okay, uh, so by partial success, how do I interpret a partial success? I think that means, I think that means, unfortunately, we've been discovered, uh, but I think that means we may have, we like, we still have a chance to retreat. Uh, that it's not going to be a full-blown fight yet. Uh, and I'm not sure how that's going to work out yet, but partial, full, sig I think a, I think a full, a full, uh, failure would have been, yes, we're fighting. And I think a full success would have been, we've completely avoided danger. I think shade means we have a chance. <laughs> we, we have a, we got a head start, but we have a chance. Uh, and I think... What that looks like is, you know, um, the the being, uh, the hollow is sort of craning its head around. I can see the the red light um, cast on the earth below us. Um, it keeps a healthy distance away from the beacon. I think the overwhelming power of the beacon's fire is, is once again too much for a single curse. But, you know, it snakes its way around it and winds and... and um, to, to get a full a full picture of the basin of this wasteland and you know every time um 
the creature cranes his head away to look towards another obelisk. Uh, Last wishes, <laughs> you know, sort of running, leaping with its mantis-like hops, boop, boop, or like locust-like hops, boop, boop, uh, but behind like stones and different obelisks, uh, trying to get uh, a sort of stay one step ahead. Um, and you can hear the whole time that whispering voice, um, you cannot hide forever, firelight. You burn too brightly to keep to the shadows. Um, and I think as Last Wish sort of sees a way out, sort of sees a path forward into hopefully what will branch off into the next part of, of Penumbra, um, you know, so, and uh, we, we sort of described when Last Wish desires it, um, they can sort of dim their lantern light to like a low rumble, which, you know, will hopefully keep them out of sight. Uh, but I think um, Last Wish puts their hand, you know, on one of the obelisks to sort of peek around to like time their, their approach just, just perfectly. And as they put their hand on the obelisk, there is a sickening crack and crunch into the stone as it was unfortunately one of the obelisks that was like heavily disrupted from the power of this hollow like digging its way out of the earth uh, as the stones begin to crack and, and, and fall away underneath uh, Last Wish's clawed hand immediately the the hollow whips its head around and there's just a flash of red light in uh, Last Wish's eyes as they are clearly uh, immediately seen by the hollow, uh, and there's sort of a uh, a hungry smirk, a, 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 a smile that sort of echoes in the back of uh, our minds. <laughs> there you are, as like the the mandibles like widen out, and you can just see just gaping nothingness, right? Just infinite darkness down this being's gullet. And there's another hollow, like, <gasps> as it, like, lurches forward. Uh, and we, I think this is where we start running, right? And it's just, like, taking a bite out of the obelisk and then, like, digging back into the earth and then popping back up. And, like, we're running and the thing is right behind us, like, sort of snaking in and out of the earth, always, like, just a couple feet behind us as we're trying to clamber our way to safety. Uh, okay, so how would we do this? Um, let's see, I think, I think we're gonna do it with evade danger. When you avoid an impending threat. Um, so let's try to evade danger <laughs> and see how lucky we are. Um, uh, let's pull our cards back up. We're gonna go one, two, ba ba. Okay, six and a seven. Those are decent cards. I think once again, we are using quick. We kind of have to use quick. I don't think we can be patient in this moment uh, as Last Wish is like leaping and hopping, sort of grass hopping uh, from stone to stone. And every time uh, barely gets uh, their foot off of one of the, the precipices and leaps off, there's just a massive crush from underneath uh, them as the, the maw of the hollow bursts upward and like swallows the stone hole and then like hits the earth again. Uh, even when the creature is under the ground and we can feel it rumbling beneath our feet, the voice is not muffled, right? Because the voice is like inside of our heads. Um, and you can hear it the entire time, uh, your footfalls are slower, firelight. I will consume that burning desire. All will be darkness. The veil is ours. You know, like coming back up, uh, we're going to roll a six and a one, which is a seven, plus a one for quick is eight, which is higher than both cards for evade danger, right? Which means we would get light in that scenario. So when you avoid an impending threat action plus approach upon light, you avoid the danger. So what that says to me is perhaps, um, perhaps, oh, what's his name? What's their name? Last Wish. I keep forgetting my own character's name. Last Wish is like hopping from stone to stone, uh, trying to find a path forward and sees uh, sort of in the rocky outcroppings of the wasteland, there's like a sliver there's like a crack in uh, some of the stonework, which is just, 
just slim enough um, for for the sinewy body of, of their mantis-like form and leaps towards it and sort of grabs the staff close to their body and just completely flattens themselves out, like tightens themselves out as much as they can and like slips into the crack, into the unknown, right? Absolutely has no idea where they're going, but at this point, any place is better than where they're at. Uh, as the huge maw is just seconds behind and you see the, the, the mouth bite into the stonework, but it isn't like the... It's not like the soil, or well, I guess it wasn't the gravel that I described before, where uh, the hollow could just easily just swallow it whole and keep going. This would require some work, some gnawing, some biting on the stone, and you see the massive jaws like clamp onto the um, to the to the crack in the stone, and you can even see some of its like dark fangs like pierce uh, through it, um, but not quite tear it out entirely as Last Wish, like, lands in complete darkness, like, taps on, uh, their staff, uh, making the firelights, uh, grow, uh, all around them, and we can see now we're sort of, like, in the subterranean tunnel, uh, looks back up towards the crack in the, in the ceiling, the cavern, uh, above them, and just sees, you know, a pair of red, uh, lights shining back down onto them, uh, from the other side, and you can sort of hear grunts of, um, oh, I should have put, uh, action music on for that scene. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I was so, like, wrapped up in the, in the narrative. Uh, you just see the red, uh, lights of the hollow's eyes, uh, glow down into the cavern, as you can hear, um, disgruntled, um, whispers in the back of Last Wish's, uh, bind. You were lucky, Firelight, but you're... <laughs> you were lucky, Firelight, but your light shall soon fade, as all the Firelights did fade. And with that, um, there's like another pang of light in the creature's uh, face, as you can see that, that, um, that newfound energy that sort of gave it that higher sentience, like leaves it. Whatever, whatever, you know, sinister force was compelling it to act in the way that it desired it leaves its mind, and the um, hollow is now free to sort of act in its more bestial, animalistic way, uh, and just releases another um, sorrowful like, mm, and you can see the body uh, lurch out of view as it begins to tunnel into a new bit of rock. Um, so I don't think that Last Wish is entirely uh, out of danger yet. I mean, this thing does burrow through the earth and we are in a cavern, but at least for now, uh, it's going to take the the creature some time to find the Last Wish again uh, in this place, which is, you know, it's it's a blessing. It's a, it's a momentary blessing. Um... But, okay, so we should make a note, though, that if we encounter a curse again, most likely it's going to be the hollow. Um, uh, I'm going to make... So I forgot to update my notes last time, but... So, we Kassar's soul was saved. Um, what else happened? We searched for treasures. Uh, was interrupted by a curse. In parentheses, hollow. Drawn to the lit beacon. Um... Uh, and then uh, the hollow found us trying to escape. Um, we bounded and hopped from stone to stone until we found a, uh, a small cavern uh, to sleek for the hollow. And then we ducked inside. It will take some time for the hollow to burrow its way into its way into the stonework. Okay. All right. Uh, so this, th so we're safe for now. We're no treasures, but we didn't suffer any fatigue. Uh, we just have a curse on our tail. Uh, and then, so big note here: the next curse is the hollow. So we can't get away. <laughs> we can't get away. Um, so now we're in the cavern. That's a that's a bummer. Uh, but hopefully we'll find our way out. Speaking of finding our way out, we should go back to our rules. 
So we are, what are we gonna do? We're gonna discover a region. We have to, because we have to keep going wherever we're going. When you look for a new path, action plus approach to expand your map. Okay, so I think at this time, Last Wish, um, you know, sort of takes a moment to collect themselves. I think scampers away from the, the, the slit in the earth, you know, just to get out of eyesight from from the hollow and not incentivize it to keep biting and tearing into the, the crack uh, that Last Wish found. Because I have no doubt that the hollow could get to us. Um, probably could still get to us, but... If we, we just bought ourselves some precious moments and threw it off our tail. But probably gets out of out of sight, sort of finds itself in maybe like a little hollow where um, Last Wish can take a breather, you know, sort of clutch their staff and sort of, um... <sighs> Protectors, guide me this place. Guide this one. <laughs> this place, so fraught with danger. Sort of like speaking to themselves um but once they have steeled themselves uh will sort of peek their lantern out into the other tunnels and begin their slow and steady journey forward so we are going to do this patiently because i think also we're afraid that if we move too quickly uh you know we might disturb some of the stones and and possibly um you know <laughs> freak out maybe any lurking hollows here but let's get a little description of uh i'm interested in maybe what the theme of these tunnels are because this world is all about you know what would it what would subterranean tunnels in the land of the dead be oh um I mean, I just kind of want to make them catacombs, right? <laughs> Perhaps, like, everything, um, uh, you know, all tunnels, um, beneath the ground in Penumbra slash the Veil are catacombs. Um, and so, you know, I I'm imagining, it's not like catacombs, like, um, because you know this this place is the place of of the dead but it's not like it wasn't inherently dark or spooky until the curses arrived right so when i imagine catacombs i imagine there are like um it's like a place of respectful rest you know there are slits that are cut uh not slits uh but like um little cubicles that are cut into the walls um that are perfectly sized for you know the mortal coils that a spirit might shuffle off of uh and i think i think that they're not actual physical bodies because that would be you know the physical bodies are actually on the material realm that they left behind but perhaps the catacombs they all create kind of like how we emerged from stone right our cocoon was kind of stone perhaps they create these these stone, um, or maybe even, the, in my mind, I'm thinking porcelain, right? Something very, like, gentle and tender. Um, these sort of porcelain casts of what the representation of their mortal bodies would have been in life. Um, and so they're all, you know, sort of, uh, and they're all painted sort of in these abstract and elaborate ways that kind of replicate maybe the features they had in life, but, you know, uh, slightly more exaggerated or, or perhaps... Um, not a, not exaggerated but um artistically rendered right so they're not like they're not like photorealistic painting interpretations of of their bodies they're like something a little bit more vague um so these like painted porcelain um husks you know um oh and i and i kind of want um what's um what's that like japanese art where like if a bowl cracks and you like you paint it back together with gold um, to like represent that it's like still worthwhile even though it's broken you know there's a, that huge like um that concept uh i can't remember the name of it but that's kind of how i want them to be i want like to represent that like even if they hurt or like if things went wrong in their lives that like they're still you know valuable and that they still are good inherently and like you know so there maybe there's like fractures along these like porcelain um 
casts of the husks of the mortal forms, um, but all the cracks are like bound together with like gold paint, right? Um, and they're probably all draped in like white shawls. Um, yeah, just like sort of ethereal shawls. Um, and those are all sort of, you know, pocketed into these like holes that are carved into the walls of the catacomb. So uh, that I think stretches on forever infinitely throughout all of Penumbra. I feel like as soon as someone dies, like a hole just appears. You know, nobody has to cut it. Nobody has to form it. The realm is designed to house those husks and it goes as deep as it needs to infinitely, right? Um, cause the world is not a physical world bound by the constraints of, of space. Um, so yes. Um, so the catacombs, uh, Veiler catacombs hold porcelain, um, painted husks of mortal forms, um, draped in ethereal white cloth. Um, the husks, um, maybe cracked, but held together with gold paint. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm gonna write for that. So that's what we're traveling through. And I think that as a firelight, I think, you know, our, our, our job is to ferry the souls, but I think we do respect, you know, the remnants of what's behind, you know, the bodies, if you will. And so I think as uh, Last Wish maneuvers their way through the catacombs, takes some time to, you know, say a few prayers or like lay a hand on one of the husks and like commune with them and like wish them a good passing. Maybe even keeps an eye out for Kasara <laughs> um, along the way. Um, but ultimately still has to move forward. Um, so, we have to discover a new region. So we're gonna go here. Where are my rules? Discover a region. I'm a smart boy, I'm a smart boy, I'm a smart boy, yeah. Uh, th that's my song, not Last Wish's song. <laughs> um, discover a region. Uh, we take an action plus an approach, so once again, we are being very patient. Um, we're gonna draw our two cards. Eight and a king. Okay. Um, what are kings worth? They're high, if I'm not mistaken. Um, kings are worth 13. Uh, so that's what? 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 21? Yeah, I knew that. Uh, boy. Okay, so we're taking a patient approach. We're going to roll our dice twice. And 8 plus 2 is 10. So... That means we get shade. Uh, we get one success. So discover region upon shade, add one of the cards to your map. So we actually get to choose which, which, which is, which I feel like should be the king, because that's another beacon. Kind of weird that the beacon is underground, but also kind of cool considering what I just described about the catacombs, right? That's kind of fun. Um, okay, so. We get to add one to our map. Also, there's a very specific way you add things to the map, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if the new card is higher than one on your current location, place the card above. If the new card is lower than the one on your current position, place the card below. Uh, so a king is higher than a queen, although we're not really here anymore, are we? Like we're kind of like in a new spot on the map. We're kind of like in between spots. Um, so you know what I'm gonna do? I know that we got success, I mean partial success. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to place this here, right? Um, and then place this here. Because this isn't really a zone in and of itself, but it does describe the linking of the regions, right? It's the catacombs. Um, I think narratively that makes sense. Otherwise, and uh, I guess, uh, yeah. Eight, 
we'll do this. Because otherwise, that would, that would be kind of weird, right? We just like go to here to here without anything in between in terms of region. I think that makes sense. Uh, Rene, uh, Pierre, <laughs> if you watch this later, you can tell me if that was a dumb move or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we're not actually going to use it as a region. We're just describing that there is a connection between the two points. Uh, and we only get this one on the map. Uh, which is a beacon, though. Which is cool. Uh, so let's figure out what this region is. So we're going to roll for a region and a theme. So I'm going to get my dice. I'm going to roll for... Um, bum, bum. A one and a six. So this is an underground lake, which is cool considering we had an estuary before. So this is what, the King of Clubs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back here. Let's go to here and add a page. A King of Clubs. So this is a lake. It's an underground lake since it is in the catacombs. And what is the other, the theme of this thing that is going on here? I need more dice. I need more dice. Um, we're gonna go bum bum, two and one. So two and one, a lake of peace, a lake of tranquility. Ooh. Okay, I think, um, Underground Lake Catacombs of Peace. Okay, so what does this say to me? You know, maybe... Hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go... Mochi! So, Mochi in the chat. Mochi in the chat. <laughs> Mochi, do you always arrive in a car? Every time you enter chat, I feel like you always use like the car emoji train <laughs> when you come into chat. <laughs> um, but a pleasure to have you with us, Moch. Uh, as always, glad to have you here. Um, yeah, we're just vibing right now, playing some Firelights. Um, oh, wait, what are these... Oh, ever since you got Faith's car, you arrive in style. Yes, you do. The whip. Um, there we go. I'm just seeing a tag near Loki's name that says cheer for 1K. I don't know if you did that. Uh, if you did, Loki, I'm sorry I didn't see it. Thank you. If you did cheer, but it is by your name, so I appreciate you. Um, I didn't get notified on stream if that's what's, what's happening. Uh, all right, so when I hear a a lake of peace, an underground lake of peace, and this is a beacon. There's also a beacon. There's a lot going on here. This is what I see in my mind, and I might actually, um, I might actually have um, Dali help me on this, um, because what I am seeing is. So we're walking through the catacombs, right? And we are hearing, happy love day. I just bought myself chocolate and strawberries. Oh, uh, wow, yeah, I have did not wish that to stream. I, it completely left my mind. I was already in the realm of like undead bug people and I was not thinking about love day. So happy love day to stream. I love all of you who come to these streams. Absolutely, uh, the regulars and the, the new folk alike. Uh, I hope you know how much you mean to me and you mean to stream, um, and I hope we continue to see you. Our streams are like our little our little dates, you know, because uh, <laughs> I love you so much. But Moch, uh, I hope you enjoy those chocolate covered strawberries. That actually sounds really good. Uh, I should have bought myself a treat. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I don't think I have much going on before stream tomorrow, so maybe I'll maybe I'll do a late. You know what? Actually, um. Does anybody remember the Little Debbie snack cakes? There's a bunch that come out seasonally depending on the holidays. They they have like the 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 heart ones for Valentine's, um, and then they have like the white and red tree ones for Christmas. Um, I love those things, and I 
I saw all the last minute lovers getting last minute things. Oh, my heart. Oh, those poor, those poor little babies. Yeah, Mochi, they're so good. They're so good. And when I was home for, you know, it's funny. When I was home for uh, the holidays, I, I remembered my family usually having them, usually having the, the, the Christmas cakes. And so I was really looking forward to, to them, but they weren't there. And I was staying for like a little over a week or something. So I was like, hey, uh, you know, mom, like no big deal. But if you like go shopping, <laughs> you know, while I'm home and you happen to see those like those, you know, those Christmas cakes, would you like buy a pack? And she was like, oh yeah, absolutely. So then she, you know, does grocery shopping at some point in the week. And she says that, that she can't find them. And it turns out that those things are so popular that they sell out so fast. I don't remember them ever being that, like, there being a craze around them. But apparently they just get gobbled up. Um, so I was really bummed because I was really looking forward to them. I don't think the cakes taste any different. I feel like the valentine's one tastes the same <laughs> as the Chris one i could be wrong um but dang now i really want those those holiday cakes maybe I, maybe i'll try to find one tomorrow i'll deliver you some do you own like the trees well that's what i mean i feel like the trees i feel like they all taste the same am, am i am i dumb i mean don't answer that <laughs> that's neither here nor there but i feel like they all kind of taste the same i don't maybe maybe that's just me uh, or maybe I haven't had both of them side by side. And who would? Who would have the Valentine's one and the Christmas one at the same time? You know? Um, but get it on eBay and it'll be a vintage pack. Yeah, a vintage pack. I'm sure they'll definitely have a slightly different taste uh, <laughs> at if they're a vintage pack. Um, but that's funny. No, um, I'm jealous. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy myself a little treat tomorrow. Treat yourself. Um, but anyway, back to this very weird and specific vision that I'm having for this place. Um, a buffet of cakes. Uh, oh my god, don't, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me with the buffet of cakes. Okay, I'm seeing Last Wish wander their way through these catacombs of these husks of these bodies, right? And what I think I see when I hear an underground lake of peace, and this is a beacon, I think I see there's a, a sort of a, a big cavernous chamber. And there's a bunch of different tunnels that lead and interconnect to it, right? Whoa, feed the beans, Mochi. Feed the beans. What do you get this time? What did he get? Did he get his favorite? No, got a cookie this time. Oh, it makes sense. We were talking about cakes. Oh, he's got a sweet tooth. He's got a little sweet tooth with those, like, <laughs> those eyes going in a million different directions. But he's still got the crown. Still got the crown. The boy's got the crown, and that's what matters. Um, I see, I see this big chamber that uh, all the, these different tunnels connect to, all, all these different catacomb passages connect to. I feel like um, it's, it's kind of like all roads lead to here to a certain extent, you know? And those, those, those pockets um, there's so, the, that ha house the, um, the porcelain husks, there's more of them, but they're larger, right? And they actually have like slabs right um that there are partially constructed um husks on okay follow me with this this is getting a little weird uh but you know we're leaning into it because that's the world we're living in so there's this big chamber there is um a hole in the ceiling of it right and there is water almost like a, like waterfall that is pouring in on all sides of it coming down, which funnels into a lake at the bottom, right? And the lake um, at its center has another huge platform with a bunch of staircases on it, right? Uh, which leads to a beacon, which right now is of course unlit um, because that's our job. But I don't think that we are alone because when I hear a lake of peace i'm seeing these other beings here 
Uh, Kevin Beacon Mochi. <laughs> oh, Kevin Beacon Mochi. I can't even be mad. I can't even be mad. <laughs> uh, Scorching Ray Cyrus, Kevin Beacon. We're, you're, we're gonna have to start creating an ongoing list of these characters. You know, we're gonna have to keep them straight. Uh, because they have to... That's what has to be coming, come into the, the fray. That's who I'm seeing, Kevin Beacon. <laughs> oh my... I mean, we've finally done it. You know, how many degrees of separation can we get from Kevin Bacon to the stream? Turns out just one. Or like one and a half with Kevin Beacon. Um... I'm seeing these other beings here, and I imagine that they are kind of like, they're covered in the same ethereal shawls, right? That the husks are, but they're not the husks. They are kind of these alien life forms. They're like maybe twice as tall as us, and their bodies are really elongated, right? And like sort of stretched out. Um, and underneath their shawls, it's kind of hard to tell if what they have is like really pale, like luminescent skin, or maybe it's just like light that is like bound into a shape underneath the cloth. But at any rate, um, you know, they have these long necks and you can just see um, sort of like a pinprick of like cycloptic light, which is like emanating out from behind the hood. Um, and they're also kind of, I think from a while back, we sort of heard this this very soothing song in maybe like a language that we don't understand or maybe a language that only exists to them. And it was almost like a siren song. It was drawing us through the catacombs, leading us further into this place. Um, and then we see them. And they are... What they do is you can kind of see they reach into the waters right and as they're singing and it's almost like they're singing to the water and it's causing like subtle movements beneath the lake right um and they're sort of singing to because we talked about how water in this world kind of like carries emotions like it was carrying the emotions of the people in the estuary of love and maybe that's where some of this water runs off into right so they're kind of like singing to the emotions of these people and sort of like calling them to the surface of the lake and like once, once you can vaguely see like a, a a humanoid visage in the water, one that's at peace, one that is calm, right? They're not in anguish or anything. They're just sort of, it looks like they're sleeping, right? Sort of comes up to the water. They sort of reach down into the waves as they're like singing. And they, they when they pull out of the water, the, the, the water itself sort of forms a piece of that porcelain. That, that the husks were made out of, you know? And it's sort of like this very religious ceremony almost where one of the creatures will, I don't wanna say lumbers because I do think it is more, it is more elegant than that. Um, but there is sort of like a strangeness to its movement. It's like undulating. It's like they're moving in pace with their song, you know? Um, sort of like a, almost like they're rocking, almost like they're cradling the pieces back and forth. Um, and they're sort of handing them down to each other in this like conveyor belt, this line um, out into the wider alcoves that were carved out of the bottom of this place where the slabs are, because the slabs that have the partially constructed porcelain husks on there um, are being attended to by other, I'm gonna call them caretakers. That's the word that's coming into my mind right now, the caretakers. Um, and the caretakers are the ones that are assembling the, the porcelain husks. And they're like painting the cracks with the gold and like reassembling the bodies. So they're kind of like coaxing the memories out of the water, sort of like helping the creatures find peace. And then like giving their bodies, their bodies, their physical manifestations a place to rest. You know, and I think also in some of the other alcoves, we can see some of the caretakers like spinning. Uh, I, I don't know if it would be yarn, perhaps. Oh, actually, what if it's like a loom? Okay, this is getting really weird. What if it's like a loom that is like pulling some of that silvery smoke 
right that is like uh dotting the landscape into the loom and then like on the other side it like spools out as like that ethereal cloth you know and that is like what they are slowly beginning to wrap the fully formed porcelain husks into so once again it's like this conveyor belt it's like there are some who are singing pulling up the porcelain handing the porcelain down um the porcelain is arranged is painted it is reformed into like a place where the soul can like you know rest as, as, outside of its body out well, yeah outside of its body um and then like the the caretakers are like wrapping the shawl kind of like mummifying them almost in the shawls to like and you can probably see some um i think some are actually carrying the the porcelain husks out into the catacombs once again i don't think i don't think they dig holes i think what happens is it's almost like you're watching a funeral right like you know how there's like usually like six pallbearers right at six on either side of a casket i think six caretakers sort of go on either side of a slab right as they're singing and like undulating and the husk oh yeah i can turn down the music absolutely I'm trying to play with the volume of the music because sometimes it's too quiet and it's really hard for me to tell in my headphones. Um, but yes, I will turn it down. Is that better? Um, I think like six caretakers just get on either side of a husk as they're singing and the body just like levitates upwards. Um, and like they and and like in between them so they're acting like the pallbearer for the husk and they just walk it into the catacombs and it like floats alongside them and then i think um when they find they eventually find a new place in the wall i think wherever the caretakers go the tunnels just continue the tunnel shape around wherever the caretakers are going and in the same sense when they find when they kind of will a new tunnel into existence when they find a spot where um where a, a new hole should be where a new alcove should be they just sort of like align the husk like towards the wall where it should go and the the wall just sort of just sort of opens up all of its own just sort of like carves itself out a perfect little spot um and then the caretakers caretakers like usher the husk into the into the spot um and it just lays there and rests and finds peace because this is the the underground lake of peace in the catacombs uh and then they you know slowly sort of undulate and float their way back into the catacombs to continue this like endless cycling dance right um of like laying these bodies um to rest uh and so we arrive here <laughs> And, you know, I think um, some of them, like, they slowly, like, look towards us. And I think, like, th one of them near us, like, looks at us. And there's almost like a blur to its form, like a little shift to its form. Uh, as we watch it kind of separate right in front of our eyes almost like it's going through like mitosis like a cell right like a cell dividing and one half of this like duplicated form like continues its duties and like continues to sing and like does what it has to do but the other one like separates from itself and then slowly sort of levitates toward us um and you know is able to to interact with us while its other self um continues its its duties as a caretaker um wow there's gonna be a lot of notes to take on this place because i'm just kind of going wild with this descriptor um but i think the caretaker um instantly sees our flame in our firelight's staff and recognizes our significance um and sort of like raises one hand and like bows its head um, you know, so the light is sort of like, um, drifting away, you know, from directly from us. And in this very sort of like ghostly, ethereal, but very calm voice, Firelight, it has been some time since 
one of your favored few has stepped foot in these halls of peace. It is a great fortune that we are to see you this day. Um, and um, I think, you know, obviously we just woke up <laughs> a couple hours ago <laughs> at this point, um, but we have the ancestral memory of the firelight. So I think we see um, the caretakers and our antennae are sort of like twitching and they're like glowing with that um, bioluminescent ember and as like more of the memories are being downloaded into our into our minds and perhaps even the protectors you know that deific voice sort of like um echoes into our minds um and says firelight these are your brethren your kin servants of the protectors the firelights guide the souls the caretakers help lay them to final rest you are safe here. Um, and, you know, we sort of hear that and that washes over us. And Last Wish sort of like tentatively looks back up. This one is honored to stand before the caretakers. Your duty and tasks are mighty, uh, as I have heard. And I like bow my head, um, you know, in reverence of the caretaker. And the caretaker um, lowers... Um, its hand. The honor is all ours. There are many caretakers, as many as there need be, but the firelights are rare. Oh. Just saw welcome to the chat. Everything okay? LOL, okay, question mark? <laughs> I'm gonna type in the chat. Um. <laughs> um. The firelights are rare. I understand they are. Their embers are burning low. It is good that you are here. You have come at a most dire time. As the caretaker uh, shifts its shawled head back towards the beacon, which of course is woefully unlit since that is our job. Um, and the uh, we last wish... This one knows that the beacons have long been extinguished by the curses. Yes, the curses, the, the arm of darkness that has fallen over the veil. You have seen them. This one has seen too many in its short life, a being of smoke and poison, another of empty hunger, all savage, all mighty. Indeed, the curses take many forms, yet they all strive for the same goal, to make sure that the souls of the dead do not reach their final resting place to to plague the veil, for what end, we do not yet know. But perhaps with your intervention, we may need never not to. Um, and uh, I think Last Wish bows their head. This one is called Last Wish. It is the final prayer of the Protectors. And you are, um, and the caretaker, um, just sort of like lightly bobs its head from side to side. We are caretakers. We need know nothing more than that. Um, and, you know, last wish bows, uh, their head in acknowledgement. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think a lot of the spirit entities in this world you know, being that they are all are in service of the dead, they probably, in my mind, unless we're like very unique individuals with very specific purposes, probably don't have a great sense of I, 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 individual self, you know, in my mind. In fact, as, all, as far as we know, perhaps this caretaker is one caretaker, which has the ability to just infinitely divide itself, possibly. Uh, who's to say? Who would ever know? 
Um, but um, with that, I think uh, Last Wish will look at the, you know, the massive uh, brasure that is um, that is currently just releasing that that steady um, trail of, of ethereal smoke up into the cavern, out the hole, uh, throughout like that that tunnel of water, um, and says, "I would like to inspect the beacon." If you would allow, this one would like to inspect the beacon. If you would allow them, um, and the caretaker nods and extends their sort of billowing ethereal hand out towards the 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 charred uh, bits of 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 rune etched birch wood that lay at the bottom of the of the the cauldron. Um, it is your purpose. We would be remiss to deny you. Um, and sort of like begins to slowly float in that direction um, as Last Wish will follow. So yeah, I kind of want to get art for the the caretakers. Um, so like, uh, how, okay, so spooky. Uh, let's well, let's say ethereal being uh, with uh, an elongated uh, silvery. Uh, body covered in a floating white shawl with um, a single golden eye peeking out from behind a hood um, standing before a waterfall at twilight we'll see what we get with this fantasy digital art you know normally they want you to get really specific with it so we'll try and see what we get with for the caretakers. <laughs> I hope, uh, I hope, uh, uh, ooh, 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 they're cool. Um, I kind of like this one. I wish, I wish that, um, it had a bit more top on, on, but we'll save this one. I think this one gives us the most of what we want. And then we'll put it here. Yeah, the caretakers, kind of like a like a like a spooky white grim reapery kind of vibe. I I, I dig it. Um, standing before a waterfall. Okay, so a lot going on here with the caretakers. <laughs> um, and I think the caretakers will lead us over to, okay, so it's unlit, which means we have to see if we can light it. Now, before, we, we, we needed to find a soul to, to light the beacon because um, we confronted risk and we only got a partial success. So perhaps there's a chance we'll get a full success here. Perhaps the fire, the power of the soul, the power because we lit our we lit our staff in the beacon flame from the first beacon, right? Um, so perhaps that's enough to light this one. I also want to imagine too that like at the center. So obviously the the platform holding the the beacon is like at the center of this massive lake, and I want to imagine that there's like these like white walkways, you know that are like connecting the lake to the sides of the stonework where the, where the, um, well actually no, cause they float, so they wouldn't even really need to. Um, oh yeah, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, okay, so forget what I said. There is a statue, there is a platform with stairs holding the beacon, but there's no walkway to it. Cause the, the, the caretakers can just float over top the water and like dip their hands in, right? But like when we have to get there, um, you know, the caretaker like sort of like walks or floats towards the water. And like, you know, we stop sort of like gingerly at the edge um, as like they continue forward in front of us. Uh, uh, caretaker, this one uh, apologizes. Uh, uh, last wish cannot do as you do. Um, and so, uh, and the caretaker so like slowly like wheels around uh and 
you can't see that there's a smile, but you can almost feel one behind the hood, right? Um, as uh, they say, nonsense. You can do exactly that. And sort of like leans their hand down towards the edge of the water as like some of the smoke billows outward. And like the fog on top of the lake itself sort of becomes this quasi like ethereal path, you know, that like kind of ekes out of, of beneath the robe of the caretaker. And so as long as we're following in the, in the caretaker's footsteps, um, we're able to walk across the top of the water uh, right behind them. I think that's much cooler than an actual walkway. Um, and I think too, because the water is spilling down from the top of the, the cavern right into the lake itself, um, I think that when the keeper, the, the caretaker, like, approaches the water, it just, like, parts for them. Like, the, the waterfall sort of curtain just sort of, like, parts like a sheet um, and, and allows for, like, a little doorway towards the beacon. And we can just follow right behind them as well. And I think, like, as we're wa walking, we're watching the other, the caretakers, like, float across the water and, like, sing into to the souls that are resting and, like, pull them up and, like, form another piece of the porcelain and pass it down. Um, and I think there's, like, a great amount of respect and, like, reverence. Like, they're, in a way, they're part of the same ecosystem that we're a part of in terms of, like, making sure that souls, you know, finally um, are at peace. Um, and even though we sort of have like an ancestral understanding, we've heard stories or we've like experienced stories that like secondhand, um, to see it firsthand, to see it happen, I think is a whole other sort of existential experience. Um, you know, we're, we're, it's, it's almost like we're able to see another side of ourselves, another a shadow of ourselves. Um, and I think that's very, very enlightening for Last Wish. Um, so, eventually, we part the, the, the waters and we find our way um, to, the, to the platform itself and the caretaker like floats on into uh, on top of it and we sort of follow suit. We like walk across the, the misty clouds onto the platform. Uh, and then we approach the, the sort of softly kindling embers at the bottom of the cauldron and the 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 caretaker looks at us um it has been some time since these fires burned do you have it within you firelight to bring it back and last wish you know rings their clawed hands around their staff somewhat nervously this one has done it before, with the aid of a spirit. They have not tried to do it outside of one. You understand. I do. If the protectors will it, they will it. You must try. And so I will. So this one will. Uh, and so Last Wish will, like, lean down and begin to crane their staff towards the cauldron, which is, you know, a light with one of the flames of the first beacon, which I imagine is a pretty powerful supernatural force. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to confront risk. So when we act in the face of adversity, we take an action and we take an approach, right? So once again, I think this is a patience, not because it's just my best, my best stat, but I think, you know, Last Wish wants to take as much time as they need to ensure the fire takes. Um, and so let us draw two cards from the top of the deck. Bump, bump. Oh, we don't take jokers. The Jack though is a bit scary. <laughs> oh no. Oh no! Oh no! Two face cards. That's bad for a bunch of reasons. That because it means it's gonna it's gonna be a really high sum, right? Um. Um. Yeah, jacks are worth eleven. Queens are worth twelve. So that's like what twenty three. There's no way we're gonna roll that. Uh, I I don't even think it's worth rolling. Um. Right. Oh no. I guess it's worth rolling. I could get higher than one. 
No, I can get higher than... I can get higher than both, right? Let me do math. Yeah, six and six plus two. I, maybe there's a chance. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just being defeatist. Let's try it. Uh, a 10 plus a 2 is 12. Jacks are worth 11. Queens are worth 12. So um, that means I beat one and I didn't beat the other. So that's a partial success, which is the exact same thing I got last time I tried to light a beacon. Um, it is a shade. Okay. Um, so what I think happens here is yes, we, we crane ourselves down towards the beacon. We we put the the fire of the first beacon into the, like the bottom of the of the brazier. We let the it sort of touch and mingle with the birch wood and the coals. And we can see that like it takes to the flame and it begins to crawl across the wood, the ever burning wood, because once again the sort of enchanted birch wood, the wood of rebirth and cleansing, like never really dies out. Um, and it, it sort of crawls across the 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 uh what's the word trunk like chunks of wood there um but it doesn't quite roar into existence it, it creates a steady slow flame but it is not what we need it is not a full burning bright uh, kind of situation um uh to which uh i think the uh you know um last wish is markedly um upset <laughs> um crestfallen a bit um as the caretaker looks to last wish and says there is something there it is not enough true but good things take time you said there was an issue at the first beacon. Yes, I needed a, another spirit. Uh, this one needed another spirit to to help kindle the fire. Uh, and to this, the caretaker looks towards the lake where the rest of the caretakers, po possibly aspects of themselves, are like singing to the souls and like drawing up the bits of porcelain uh, and says, if it is a soul in need that you require, there are more than enough here that could use your guidance. Um, and Last Wish kind of peeks their head over at the caretakers um, and says, but these are not whole souls. No, they are what remains after the passing. True, true. But there is a sliver of all things in others. You know this. We know this. Come. And the caretaker, like, floats uh, their way over towards um, the water. Um... And, and uh, Last Wish follows in their footsteps, kind of walking along the smoke uh, until they find a suitable spot in the lake which isn't being occupied by another caretaker. Um, and um, Last Wish kind of is studying the featureless face of the caretaker, not quite sure, you know, what the caretaker is trying to do or try to accomplish with Last Wish quite yet. Um... Uh, until the caretaker looks down and the sort of platform, if you will, of smoke, the sort of disc of smoke that is emanating out of their robes and sort of providing Last Wish a place to stand kind of begins to spread in part until it becomes more like a ring, right? And the other, uh, the other, of, the other side of which they can look down into the depths of the river, or I should say the lake, and we can see sort of idly swimming like like schools of fish are those souls right they all look slump like they're in slumber they're in a peaceful sleep uh they don't look they're they're locomoting their movements they're just sort of lying on their backs facing upward and sometimes they like shimmer into the water and almost dissipate you can't see them and other times they they form but they're definitely there beneath the the subtle waves 
um, and says, <laughs> what, what am I, where am I going with this? This is like so abstract, but I mean, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, but where am I going with this? Um, the caretaker says, the, the casts are the physical manifestations of the souls once they come across the veil. They must be cared for just as the waking souls must be ferried. They are still connected, if even at a great distance, if even from beyond the fires of the beacon. And Last Wish slowly nods their head, um, sort of taking in this new information. While the caretakers do not deal in proper souls as the firelights, we do care for an aspect of them, a sliver. Perhaps it could be what you need. Um, and to this uh, last wish sort of nods in agreement. Still not sure if this is the path forward, but there's no other answer at the moment and says by the protectors this one would do everything within its power to to relight the beacon but what do you suggest i suggest we suggest last wish that you learn the song of peace from the caretakers you learn the ways of caring for a soul the way that we do, and perhaps, in so doing, you will find the strength to light this beacon. Um, and whatever bug-like <laughs> expression that Last Wish can make, you know, widening their eyes, caretaker, that is a, a great, a great task. I, I am a firelight. I, I carry the flame. I do not deal with the waters. This is... It does not matter what you have done. It matters or will do. It matters what you can do now. All we have is the present. All they have is now, this moment, time unending, stretching on beneath the waters. It is what we have. It is what we can offer. And last wish. There's a lot of emotions. <laughs> Not sure how to handle the situation. Uh, but on duty bound to figure out the beacon. I will do as you teach. Um, and I think uh, the caretaker nods and begins showing showing um, last wish, the sort of ritualistic dance, the movements, the motion of, of dipping down into the water and sort of cupping the face of one of the souls and like lifting them up, you know, to the, to the edge of the water and sort of pulling out a hunk of, of, of porcelain and sort of like showing last wish. Um, the souls must be must be brought to bear their finality. They must be ushered into their final resting place. You can help them as we help them. Do as I do. And I think like as I'm as as Last Wish is listening to the song, it is almost like beginning to make sense to them. It's almost like the tongue of this unknown language is like a, an unspoken spiritual tongue, which when Last Wish first heard it, you know, was completely foreign. But as it's almost like because the caretakers want Last Wish to know, and because they both are beings of the protectors and of the veil, that they can impart this knowledge almost like psychically within him, you know? 
And so the song begins to take form and the words begin to make sense. And they begin to replicate it. And I think, I think too, like when Last Wish sings, it's like more like the chirps and like the buzzes of like crickets, you know? Um, it, it hits all the same notes, you know, like all the same timbre and all this, it climbs and crescendos and dips and sways in the same way that like the caretaker song does, but like translated into like, you know, like in like that weird sort of like buggy way. Um, so it creates like this really interesting sort of sonorous experience if you were in that cavern, right? Cause you're hearing like this sort of almost like angelic song mingling with like this chirping, um, but it's like synchronizing, um, as last wish, um, oh boy, should I, I, should I just, uh, you know what, maybe this is a moment where he's searching for treasures, you know, that's how my crave kick it, cricket sings, says Mochi, <laughs> um, I mean, hey, those are, uh, if you got crave, crave, cave crickets that's hard to say say that five times fast if you've got cave crickets 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 <laughs> if you've got cave crickets uh that's how they sing lucky uh well i'm kind of torn there's a part of me that wants to say this is searching for treasures there's another part of me that almost wants to say i'm buying information but i have to spend treasures which it doesn't re and i have treasures to spend but Maybe it doesn't quite fit. It could also be confronting risk because we're confronting adversity. We're trying to learn. Um, we're trying to learn a new skill on how to deal with souls, right? Um, I'm gonna say confront risk. I'm gonna say confront risk. Um, so yeah, let's put these away draw two new cards oh gosh oh why are you doing this to me game i'm not gonna find a i'm not gonna find another beacon for so long uh at this rate um okay so queens are worth how much queens are worth 12 12 the game says okay we i'm gonna be patient i'm gonna roll twice Seven, eight, nine, yeah. That's not gonna be enough. Um, that's actually darkness. <laughs> uh, so it's a setback and I suffer one fatigue. So I think what happens here, well, I have three fatigue right now. That's not good. I have to read about fatigue. You may have some more fatigue. When your fatigue is full or your store deck is empty, you have to rest or flee. When you rest, fill an entry in your journal book, shuffle the cards. Okay. Okay. So I think what happens here is I replicate the song as best I can, and I do a beautiful job, but a, a firelight is still not a caretaker. And I think, you know, like as I dip my hands into the water and I begin to pull it up and I can almost feel underneath my my uh, also I feel like whenever I have to like let my staff just chill I feel like I can just like hold it to my side and it just levitates perfectly straight and still for me you know just kind of like by my side um providing light as I will it but I dip my hands into the pool and I begin to to you know pick up um cup the faces of one of the souls and like bring it to the surface but like as i do i i don't have quite the same touch as a caretaker oh excuse me and i can feel it like solidifying i can almost see underneath the water where it's kind of becoming that porcelain material but as it breaks the water it kind of like begins to shift back into liquid in my hands and i can see the face uh, almost like opens its eyes for a second, like in confusion, like <gasps> like half liquid and half porcelain in my hand because I'm I'm not quite as as tenured as a caretaker, and I think I, it's the soul is spooked and I am spooked, and like I sort of release my hands outward and the water, the like the bits of porcelain uh, plot back into the water and become liquid again, and the face like 
you know, eyes was once opened, immediately falls back into slumber as soon as it hits the water and like drifts back into the waves. And that whole process um, is very taxing for Last Wish, right? Like sort of communicating directly with like the soul water um, just takes a great deal of energy out of him. And you can see like sort of the ember-like bioluminescence that crawls across his shell, like fades, it darkens a little bit. And like the lantern light also darkens um, as the... As the keep, as the caretaker immediately reaches out and like puts a hand on our shoulder, and a wave of like soothing energy, like immediate peace, like rolls through our body, like collects our ourselves, right? Um, but we still are, you know, taxed from that from that experience. Um, last wish, do you suffer? How do you feel? Um, and last wish sort of like shudders um, and like maybe like even falls down to like one knee. I, this one, this one is fine. It, it is very tired. The caretaker's task is a difficult one for a firelight. Um, and the caretaker nods uh, and looks back towards the rest of the, the cavern, right? Where the rest of the caretakers are doing their other duties, where they are painting the husks where they are spooling the the shawls where they're ferrying the souls into the catacombs um and says this is only but one of the caretaker's tasks perhaps concluding another would grant you the strength you seek come there's no time to waste um and like draws away from the the ring uh, and last wish i think sort of somberly watches as the rest of the souls continue to swim beneath him them i feel like there is sort of like a pang of regret and like failure you know even though even if even if this is not his task it is part of his goal to light the beacon and so i think there is a feeling of failing that that hits them um but tears themselves away from that little that pinprick of of view down into the water uh, and follows the caretaker to another part of the the cavern so i think the next part would probably be taking the pieces of porcelain to be assembled into a husk right so um i think the caretaker um leads us over to one of these places and perhaps there's like a small team of caretakers who are like performing the task um and they don't even look up they don't even look up from what they're doing um because they're all sort of sharing that same mental impulse as the caretaker who's leading last wish so there's no there's no reason to stop um and says um souls Some souls have difficulty passing on, as you may well know. Here, we help reconstruct a sense of... Hmm, what would they reconstruct? If we're going with the analogy of like painting the porcelain pots after they've been cracked, um, some find that they're leaving their mortal world has come too early. It is a failing on their part. We help them reconcile this, this pain. We put them back together in a very real way to help mend those wounds of the heart. Uh, and as the caretaker is explaining this, you know, they have these like long handled like silver brushes. And I feel like they're not even dipping the paint into anything, I think, like, it's just sort of, like, infinitely, like, leaks gold, like, out of, like, the head of this, like, silvery, you know, needle. Um, perhaps, like guiding the souls to a beacon, you can help repair what is wounded within them. Perhaps that is your purpose this day. Um, and sort of, um, 
flicks their wrist, and I think, like, there's a spool of that silvery smoke that, like, forms into a needle right in their hand um, as they extend it out towards Last Wish. Um, so I think, yeah, I think this is going to be another confront risk, right? Like, it's we're going to try our hand at another task. Uh, we're going to take two cards. We're going to flip, flip. Ooh, this one seems a lot more doable. Once again, we are patient. We are patient, 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 patient. Um, so that's a seven, which means we are higher than both, which means it's a full success. Um, so I think, you know, Last Wish takes the, the quill, the needle, the brush, whatever you want to say, the implement, the tool, um, and begins, once again, sort of hovers over, Emoji doing a dance, woo, Last Wish dance, um, hovers over this, like, partially constructed husk, and there are, like, bits of porcelain scattered around it, maybe, like, held in, like, these very delicate, like, vases and things like that, and I think, like, the the caretakers don't eat it's not like a puzzle to a caretaker right the caretaker just sort of like leans a hand out towards where the vases are and the exact correct piece finds its way to the caretaker's hand and then all they have to do is like paint it like this this like mystical golden glue and like bind it i think last wish doesn't have that that um that luxury i think last wish has to work for it has to like find the piece has to look and perhaps like the caretakers can aid a bit maybe even one like picks up their hand like re levitates their hand over one of the vases and like gets the right piece and like hands it to wish who like nods and like thank you and like begins to paint and like bind it um but it's a but it's a far more painstaking process for Wish. Wish is not accustomed to doing this, uh, and so it takes a great deal of time and effort to construct the pieces. But after a certain amount of time, um, the husk is complete. And at first, the husk like is laying completely like straight, you know, uh, just sort of like flat out um, with like, and it looks as though the way that the husk has been reformed, like the eyes are still open, right? Even though there's no eyes, they're just like white porcelain material. Um, but as this, the keepers are like singing and they're doing their task, they eventually like come to the sort of like moment of repose where they, where they all sort of like put their hands in this prayerful gesture and bow their heads. Um, and they're like singing and Last Wish is of course following suit and like replicating their motions. And like, as they all do this in unison, the porcelain husk's arms actually come up from their sides and like cross over their chest, right? In like a, in like a gesture of, of rest and the eyes close, you know, which like symbolize the husk has been completed properly and it is ready for rest. Also, I just had a crazy moment of deja vu. I feel like I've, I've lived this moment before. That's not me being weird because we're playing this game about like death and souls and birth and rebirth and passing on i feel like i've that the this set the string of sentences is incredibly specific and i feel as though i've said them before weird anyway um but i think that once last wish um oh boy i already have an idea of what's gonna happen here <laughs> um I think once Last Wish completes this process with the caretakers, there is suddenly a flash of light. Um, <laughs> Mochi says, in your deja vu, did you see me kissing a boy down by a modium aisle? Listen, you already asked the eight ball multiple last times. Last times? Multiple times last night. The eight ball has spoken, Moch. It, it ain't happening. I mean, yet. Yeah. You can ask the eight ball again. Maybe they'll, <laughs> maybe they'll reconsider. Uh, but hey, you you got strawberry chocolate. Covered, I almost said strawberry covered chocolates, which has anyone done that? Did I just invent something new? Is that that sounds good? I would eat that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, ask the eight ball again, Mouch. Um, 
I think there's a there's an immediate like flare of firelight from the staff, which has been hovering dutifully next to um, Last Wish with like a newfound vigor and a newfound power. Uh, <laughs> Mochi says, uh, uh, strawberry covered chocolates has been done. It'll be at the cake buffet. Oh, I want a piece of cake right now so bad. There, there's a part of me that really wants to do like that that terrible New Yorker thing of like ordering like a piece of cake from a diner <laughs> at like too late a time at night. Uh, no, I won't do it. I won't do it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I want it, but I don't need it. Um, but the fire roars to new life behind Last Wishes staff uh, as they've sort of taken part of this ritual of rest. Um, and you can see while some of the caretakers um, sort of like nod in acknowledgement and they raise up from the slab, the body sort of levitates upward and begins to follow them towards the next station or like almost be, is, well, yeah, no, we'll say we'll keep that whole funeral procession, procession thing going on where there's like, you know, um, a bunch on either side ferrying them to the next station where like the shawls are being spun and about to be wrapped. Um, the caretaker looks at the flame, which is now burning bright at in Last Wish's um, staff, and looks back at Last Wish. I believe the protectors are telling you something, Firelight. Perhaps your task is nearly complete here. Um, and sort of like, with whatever I can muster of a smile behind like my mandibles, maybe they excitedly like click and like rub together, right? <laughs> and like the 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 somewhat um, lessened bioluminescence across my carapace sort of like flares with excitement for a moment. This one only has one way to see, and like grabs the staff excitedly and begins to walk towards the the, the beacon with, of course, the caretaker uh, leading the way. They have to. <laughs> um, to get towards the next part of the the beacon they get there um i think um that that last wish approaches the the beacon and rest the flame of his staff into into the the bottom of the cauldron and the fire begins to burn brighter and it's stronger but it doesn't shoot up in that like column of radiance that the previous one did um uh and there's a there's a there's an excitement but there's a confusion um and says this one does not understand we have done the task the fire is bright what what is wrong and the caretaker thinks for a moment and says, when you, when you guided the last soul to the last beacon, what did you do? This one spent some time recounting their life, their joys, help them remember themselves in a way perhaps now you must remember yourself this moment what we have taught you as caretakers come let me help you and like they begin to do this like ritualistic song and dance once again um almost like craning towards the fire perhaps this is like a ritual gesture they would do to like honor the beacon you know, in the times before it was unlit. And um, Last Wish sort of like solemnly nods and like follows along and does all of the same things. Um, as the And with every gesture that Last Wish does to like completion, the fire like grows and like another, another bit like cracks to life and there's another gout of flame and it's growing and it's growing. And the caretaker says, um, you are the last of the firelights. This means perhaps you must carry a heavier burden. Perhaps more than ferrying is your task, Last Wish. Perhaps this is only one step of a much greater journey. And like, as they're singing, like doing the motions and, you know, as he's hearing this recollecting in their mind um, and on like the, the final moment of like last journey, like echoes throughout um, the protectors echo back into Last Wish 
Uh, and you can hear, they can hear with like that resounding power of like that deific voice. It is done. <laughs> well, column of fire zhoo, lurches upward and outward, um, cutting through the that hole in the ceiling where this massive chamber was, right? It almost like some of the water almost like wisps out into steam uh, as the fire grows so strong and so high for a moment. And then eventually, and it casts like a gold shine above um, above our heads until like it finally begins to like slowly lower back down and like become a more manageable but ever roiling flame. And I think in this moment, all of the caretakers sort of stop. And no matter what their tasks are, and they're almost like stupefied for a moment as they all begin to wander back towards where Last Wish and the the caretaker that um, that they're speaking to, and they sort of create like this ring, right? Because they can all levitate across the water. So some of them are maybe standing on the platform, and then there's like another line and another line and another line until you can barely see like where the platform begins and the the water ends and like the the lake bed begins like inside the platform it's just like a stretch of white cloth as, as as far as you can see and they all sort of like take like this like bow gesture before the flame as they all recognize like its power and its significance and they and they're all sort of like singing the song of its rebirth um and the fire is strong now uh and that is a successfully lit beacon as far as i'm concerned that's two baby king of clubs um two out of six i'm gonna make a note here um beacons beacons two out of six perfect um um and so uh i i think uh last wish you know uh, excitedly <laughs> lit Kevin Beacons. Yeah, every every <laughs> every every caretaker is secretly actually called uh, Kevin Beacon. That is that is <laughs> that is our secret canon. Um, I think Last Wish will you know sm uh, click their mandibles excitedly uh, and lower their staff towards the the second beacon, which will flare with even a, a newfound light. Um, as the, um, the caretaker nods in acknowledgement. I heard the protectors just then. Did you? This one did. They are pleased with you, Last Wish, as we all are. You are too kind. Uh... Mochi says, under those robes, there's some fishnets, and at midnight, they foot loose. <laughs> oh, my God. That I need, I need art of. I need, like, a little can-can of caretakers with, like, <laughs> silvery fishnet stockings. <laughs> if you can, can, can! I think my cat's going crazy behind me, by the way. If you can, can, can! Yeah, she's going nuts. Baby, what's she doing? Um... Uh, you are too generous to this one. You have done the impossible twice, Last Wish. Our generosity is insufficient. We can only hope that we can aid you further in your journey to come. Um, and Last Wish, like, crosses their staff across their chest and, like, bows, feeling very blessed to have had this moment. Um... Now, the thing that I'm a little nervous about is, you know, the last time that we lit a beacon, a curse found us. So I think uh, I'm going to make a roll <laughs> to see if, you know, something bad happens. Um, so I think we're going to confront risk because I think once the fire is lit, because the the hollow was outside and it was burrowing through the earth and the stone. And we've had more than enough time to like be slow and take our time somewhere. So it's had more than enough time to like dig and gnaw its way through the earth. Um, and so uh, let us see if it finds us. Um, so I'm going to take my die. Oh, I'm going to take, sorry, I'm going to take my 
Here we go. I'm gonna draw my two. Ooh, a king. A king is a 13, if I remember correctly. Yeah, kings are 13s. Um, so then what is this? What approach would I be taking? Uh, well, actually, no, I could ask the oracle, right? When you want to answer a yes or no question, yeah, does the, does the, does the, uh, <laughs> words, brain words, does the hollow find us? Um, I don't think it's very likely because I think this place is still somewhat secretive and hidden, but I don't think it's entirely unlikely because it's had some time to worm around, quite literally. I think it's just a 50-50 shot. I think it's a plus one. So I'm going to roll my die now and see what I get. Bum, bum. So it's an eight plus one is a nine. So I beat one, but I do not beat the other, which means um, yes, but. Okay, so what I hear from this is, um, so yes, it finds us, but it's a partial success. Um, there's a big rumbling throughout the entire catacombs, right? Um, and there's um, stones begin to shake and the water begins like, um, the water begins rippling and you know, some of the alcoves are shaking and the vase is holding, the, the porcelain is shaking and the caretakers are, are like looking, um, I mean, you can't see their emotions, but it's definitely probably like some semblance of worry, you know, like grow, growing across their faces to some degree. Uh, and I think um, as, and and of course, like <laughs> last wishes, like shaking, holding onto their staff. Oh no, it cannot be. It is. And then there's like a, you know, it's almost like a, a fist of black scales uh, punches through one of the sides of the catacombs as rocks explode outward as the worm-like body of the hollow uh, cracks through the sides of the catacomb. Uh, once again, probably like snaking its way away from the water and the flame since those are like realm, that's like powers of like the goodly spirits. Um, but it can like, pretty much hold its entire body aloft inside of this cavernous chamber, right? Um, and just opens up that toothed maw. You just see the endless nothingness inside of its gullet uh, open wide, that just like infinite blackness. The red lights um, of its eyes shining like headlights down, casting a sickly crimson pall across all of the, the white robes of the caretakers. And that empty stomachless like roar that you know emanates outward so it has found us but i also do not think that this is the first time that the caretakers have dealt with something like this and i also do not think um that they're completely powerless you know against the curses so i think like it belches outward and it opens up its maw and it's like, mm, you know, like roaring. Um, and last which like clutches uh, their staff and like holds it forward and begins to burn brighter, like ready to fight. Um, but the caretaker like stands before last wish uh, and just raises that one hand again. And um, as like, um, you can hear the, the, there's another pang. Oh, software update. No, thank you. <laughs> we don't need a software update right now. Um, there's sort of like a, a another pang of realization as the consciousness of that darker entity invades the mind of the hollow. And you, we get the distinct sense that it is not only speaking to Last Wish's mind, but it is speaking to like all of the caretakers. Um, you fools aid the firelight in an endlessly failed task. Relinquish it to me. It deserves its final death. Um, and the uh, I think the caretaker like raises its hand and says, "You have no place here. You have never had a place here. Not in this sacred place, and not in Penumbra. 
you will no longer step your... Oh, it's not a foot. <laughs> you will no longer worm your way into the places most holy to us. Be gone with you. You are not welcome. And like, as all of like the caretakers like raise their hands, uh, a, like a, a ethereal like golden light, the same light that like burns behind their eyes, like pours out of their palms, out of these like symbols of like warding and like barring. Uh, and they reach upward and they sort of create this like, almost like dome-like structure of light, right? Um, in front of... <clears throat> in front of the beacon, in front of Wish, in front of the lake where all of the caretakers are, as they're all sort of, like, giving their light energy, like, to this barrier. And the creature, like, you can hear, like, a rumble, like, a growl behind, like, everyone's ears, if they have ears or their antennae or they're just gaping holes of where their hoods are. Um, <clears throat> uh, you cannot stop me. I am inevitable. I am the darkness of the veil, and it like retches itself against the the um the barrier and just like, like sort of like reverberates off and like snakes back into the earth and like tries from another angle and just like bounces off of it at one point like opens up its jaw and like sinks into the shield and like you can see those dark fangs like pierce the the barrier uh, and like try to wrestle with it and like tear it free um but just as quickly like the caretakers reach forward and begin to like um lend more of their light and i think instinctively too like last wish i think um like steps forward and perhaps like holds their staff up towards um the uh the hollow and it's almost like the flames of the beacon grow brighter, right? Um, and like you can see the heat, like you know, like like when you see like a, a a a video of like the desert landscape, there's like a shimmering, like a heat wave. You almost see that like burning at the edge of the barrier, as like um, last wish is like helping to channel the 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 beacon's flame alongside the the power of the caretakers and the protectors. Uh, and you can see that like like beads of sweat if you will or like sort of like melting uh armor of the hollow is sort of like beginning to happen from beyond the other side of the barrier and you can hear like more grumbling uh and like roaring uh both like from the the creature itself of that hollow like whir, like the but also like the the consciousness within the hollow um do not refute me it is only a matter of time um and the, the caretakers, uh, you know, with their hands up high, your time here has come to an end. Be gone with you. Uh, and then um, Last Wish will say, in the name of the protectors. And there's like another like flash of light and fire uh, as the being is like ratcheted backward and like slams into the back of the cavern and like more stones kind of... Um, fall and like some of the water too probably splashes on its carapace which causes like this sort of acidic pain right because they don't want to be in contact with like elements of the spirit world and like more of the carapace becomes scarred and like etchings like dig into it um and i think the hollow knows that it does not have the power to break through once again i should have put the dramatic music on for this scene but i just get got so excited uh with the how the story was going Somebody remind me next time there's like a cool scene happening. I got to put on action music. Um, I think the hollow is blasted back against the cavern and sees that the combined might of the, the agents of the protectors, the, the caretakers, the last firelight before a beacon in like the, the temple of peace is like all of that combined power is far too much for it. And it cannot contest it. Um, as, like, um, there's, like, a, another a, a snicker in the back of our minds. This is not the last time we meet, Firelight. Nor you, caretakers. We will bide. We will wait. And we will be triumphant. And there's another, like, there's another flash of, of, of energy from the creature as the, the consciousness leaps from its mind. And once again, the hollow is just left to be its normal, bestial, brutal self. And it releases another, like, as it sees, like, 
it now feels the supernatural presence around it and it no longer wants to contest it as it like leans its head into another side of the cavern and begins gnawing and chewing its way and like forcing its body through one of the holes and begins to snake its way back into the earth and disappear um and once the caretakers and last wish feel like the being is sufficiently far away enough um they will release their hold on the barrier of energy and uh last wish will lower their staff and the flames will still burn brightly it's still a beacon but it won't quite be as animate as it was when it was being sort of cajoled by by last wish um as um Kevin Beacon is in Tremors. <laughs> yeah, we're casting Tremors 8, 9, 10. How many Treasure tre treasure, treasure National Treasure movies are there? How many Tremors movies are there? Too, too many? I don't know. I think I haven't seen all of them. I imagine they probably get bad after a while. Uh, yeah, Kevin Beacon now cast in Tremors. Uh, you heard it here. You heard it here first. Um, I think... Um, after that, you know, that you feel the rumblings and the shakings get a suitable distance away, um, and the, the being fully retreats, um, you know, Last Wish looks at the caretakers. This one is remorseful that it has brought that darkness to your doorstep, your place of peace. You have nothing to apologize for, Last Wish. The hollows, the curses, they have found their way here before. They will certainly do so again. But they cannot contest us, not here. And not, as uh, it looks back towards the fire, with the beacon burning again. You have done this realm a greater service than you know. Uh, and last wish, you know, once again, I feel like they're very reverent of each other. Uh, but keep, they keep bowing and like respecting each other. I mean, granted real recognize real um but says there are moments with the curses where something someone speaks through them something powerful something evil do you know what this is and the caretaker like solemnly sways its head from side to side it is a force unlike anything the veil has seen before that penumbra has seen before we know not its name we call it only the doom of the veil who makes those sick names who, na who makes those sick names? We know it only as the doom of the veil. Once its consciousness pierced this land, everything became corrupted, poisoned. The curses followed shortly after. It wants to prevent the souls from passing on. It is the one that extinguished the beacons. But why? We do not know. I assume it was also responsible for the deaths of your firelights. Perhaps it hoped, by destroying the firelights, the beacons would remain unlit forever. But your existence proves them wrong. I can only hope that you continue to do so. Uh, and not to make a pun, Last Wish nods. That would be this one's wish as well. And perhaps there's even like a small laugh from Last Wish. <laughs> and maybe even like a chuckle <laughs> from the caretaker uh, themselves. I believe I've told you all I can and given you all I can in this moment. You are welcome to stay here as long as you like to rest, to recover, but there are more beacons and they require your light. This is true. I thank you. I hope 
This one hopes that we meet again. That hope is shared, Firelight. And the caretaker sort of doesn't... It, it doesn't, like, leave Last Wish so much as it... Once all the caretaker starts spreading back out and doing their tasks again after protecting the, the like, the temple from the hollow... The um, the caretaker that, that Last Wish was mainly dealing with just sort of fuses back into the nearest caretaker doing its job, right? Um, and just kind of leaves Last Wish alone. Last Wish needs no more guidance, needs no one else to talk to. Now it's perfectly capable of, of rejoining its brother and its kin. Um, and Last Wish has to eventually find their way uh, out of this place. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think that's where we're gonna end this one for tonight. I think this is a good place to end before we, we go on to a next journey. You know, one thing I'm realizing as I'm playing this game and um, uh, Rene Pierre, if you watch this episode, which hopefully you do, because I believe you like the last one, maybe you can give me some advice on this. Um, because I'm realizing that with the way, because I don't have a physical stack of cards, I've been using a digital one for the stream, uh, I can't always choose the exact same cards to be gone from the deck, right? So that may actually be skewing the chances of like what is coming up for me and what is not in terms of my exploration and stuff. I might end up finding beacons a lot faster if all of the, um, if all of these, face cards get reshuffled back in. I guess before I start, I could remove these face cards, right? That'd probably help. How many are there? Oh my God, we drew so many of this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna make a note there. Uh, six face cards discarded. Uh, but yeah, maybe you could give you could give me some tips, uh, author of Firelights, um, on what you would suggest for continuous play like this in this kind of format. What would help keep things a bit more fair? Because uh, I don't know if it's if it's uh, likely that you would find two beacons that close, or if I'm just I'm just that lucky. Uh, but with that being said, I think that'll be the end of our of our of our session for tonight. Uh, once again, this has been. Firelights uh, by Fari RPGs. Um, please check out this document, this game. It is six bucks. It is, as you can see, incredibly cool. Um, as long as you lean into that imagination hard, you can do so much with it. Um, and the author is super active on Twitter and talking with people and... I believe, I don't know if it's closed right now, but I'm going to plug their, um, they're having a jam session. So if you want to, I, I, I don't know if it's closed, it might still be open, but they're running a jam session. So if you like this game setup and you want to, maybe you, you can think of like somehow you can iterate on it or make something that expands upon it or uses the rule set in a new way, um, you can join the jam and submit like your creations. Um, but yeah, six bucks on itch.io, link um, in the chat right now on Twitch, and I will definitely give the link to the YouTube posting as well, like I did last time. So please download it, please support um, indie RPGs everywhere. Um, and thank you so much to the author of this, of this game for once again um, showcasing us on their page. If you go to itch.io to buy the game, uh, our stream, our, our video is featured there as like a play example, which is like, I'm very honored for that. Um, so thank you again. But yeah, uh, with that, I think we're going to move back to just, uh, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, if you, uh, if you've stuck around to the end, uh, once again, thank you so much. Your time and energy and your, your participation in chat always means so much to me. Uh, and I'm glad that you're just here supporting, um, you know, indie RPG, solo RPG, storytelling games, all that fun stuff near and dear to my heart. Um, you've been watching Level 1 Adventuring. We are a role-playing game and, um, and TTRPG channel. It's what we are all about here. Uh, 
So if you want more content like this, stay tuned. It's Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays with all the episodes getting pushed to YouTube. Uh, tomorrow, which is Wednesday, is our big campaign night. And I'm pretty sure, fingers crossed, the gang is meeting. I think we're only down one. I think we're only down gray. Um, so there's going to be some D&D tomorrow. There's going to be some rolling dice. It's going to be a good time. So we hope to see you there. Uh, thank you, Tabletop Audio, for the wonderful sound effects. Thank you, Streamlabs and Stream Spell, for the stream effects. Check out the affiliate link below if you want to upgrade your own streams. Um, and once again, please follow us on all the platforms, all the socials, especially YouTube and Twitch, because that's where we're really trying to grow. And the Discord, where um, we're setting that up to be an actual play space. I actually submitted some new stuff to my co operator of the discord today to get reviewed so hopefully there'll be some DD happening there soon for the community um but until then uh i'll see you tomorrow and i hope you get some rest uh, enjoy your love day enjoy your candies and your chocolates and your cakes and your kevin beacons uh and i just uh think you're all just so great and cute i think you're all so cute uh and i hope that your life is good until i see you next so until then be well be good. I'm going to run that outro now if I can find it. Yep. I'll see you soon.